Startup Spotlight, the podcast where we dive into innovative uh, startups shaping the future. I'm your host, Mark, and today we are tackling a critical question. And that is, what surprised you the most in the robotics industry since you started your company journey and how has that shaped your approach to innovation? Um, with me, I'm very happy to have Dave from Raleigh and Oscar from Tapnemus. Um, and they are startups that are actually transforming the industry as, as we talk. Um, we will tackle a critical question, uh, but first let me uh, introduce uh, Dave. Well, uh, well, hi everybody. Thank you for the invitation. For me, it's a pleasure. My name is Dave. I'm the CEO and founder of Raleigh. I have been in IT for the last 15 years, working in different verticals from FinTech, chatbots with NLP, neuroscience, dating, but also corporate innovation, where I had the opportunity to actually start what we call now uh, Raleigh. So I was the head of a 5G, working with autonomous robots and, and 5G and edge computing. And yeah, this is how I started the whole history behind three years ago, actually. Thank you. Oscar. Hello, uh, I'm Özgün, Tabnomus co-founder. Uh, we have been uh, working on its autonomous mobile solution technologies for then, uh, 12 years, oh. I can say. And last year uh, on Tabnomus, we have been developing uh, many different type uh, autonomous mobile solution technologies and safe drive uh, driving solution technologies. All right. Thank well, you. then let's uh, start tackling the, uh, the, the question. And the question is, what surprised you most about the robotics industry? So, Asgard, maybe you can uh, you can take that off. What surprised you the most about the industry? Actually, as an engineer and as a uh, business developer in my uh, position, uh, I saw many opportunities. Uh, actually, I saw full of opportunity ocean uh, in the industrial sites uh, in robotic area, especially because uh, there are many solutions in this area, but uh, all of, almost all of this is uh, has uh, low repeatability mm -hmm. problems. So uh, in for beginning from first day, uh, we aware of this, uh, we can solve and change this. Actually, so we start to work on it uh, from uh, first day, and the, now uh, we can success uh, many things about this area. All right, and Dave, so a surprise is always something you don't expect. So can you share with the, the listeners something that came to you in the industry that you didn't expect going in there? Well, actually, I think the quick adoption of new technologies on top of that. So we're talking about, a, in my case, cloud, cloud computing. So in my opinion, this is the future of robotics. How we're going to have more integrations, more uh, things going on on cloud. And just think about it. You see all these these movies about Transformer, for example. These small robots. This will be working only if everything will be processed on the cloud. So I think this type of thing that is coming are super huge. We have Nvidia, for example. Uh, there is actually rolling, and they are the leaders uh, working with the software technologies for robotics. Mm -hmm. We're part of it, by the way. We're part of the Nvidia session programs. We have a lot of new features there that I hope soon we're gonna play around and okay. make it public. So the, the, the speed of innovation or the speed of adoption actually uh, su surprised you? Yes, yes, okay. definitely, definitely. Okay. Well, I did some, some homework and I found actually a Greek god that was already uh, talking about robotics. There's, apparently there's a Greek god. I'm not going to pronounce the name because I will horribly fail. But that person actually, or the god, I'm not sure if it's a person, was already uh, inventing mechanical assistance. Um, so the speed of adoption takes us back about 2,000 years, which is, I, I'm not saying that's very quick. Um, but the funny thing is then after that, you had something that was called the loom. A loom is where you actually make a new carpet or whatever. And that's where the first automation, so to say, because robotics always is also about automation. And I think many of the listeners will think about the auto industry or whatever. Right. But that was already invented in 1800. Um, and there was actually punch cards in there that later came their way into the computer industry. So I would say that the waving of, of uh, fabric is actually uh, a predecessor of uh, robotics. Um, but hearing all that, and then of course we have science fiction, right? You see a lot of robotics and there's actually already somebody talking about that robots should not harm humanity, etc. So it has been around uh, with us for quite some while, but I think the whole adaption is now taking a speed uh, as we see. And I see you have a uh, an answer to that, uh, Dave, but I will first go to Oscar. So what is your thought about this Greek god already 2,000 years thinking about robotics and where we are now? Yes, uh, actually, uh, it sounds like a, a too long time or so, but uh, nowadays when we uh, track and uh, follow uh, some 
and development uh, stations. We can see this easily. Uh, there is a exponentially growing uh, day by day uh, nowadays. So and it's really uh, affects also uh, well, it good and also badly uh, this uh, area because everything changes very fastly uh, nowadays. Uh, before uh, 50 years ago, yes, we were uh, used to see same things, same robots, uh, same automation systems, same machines. But nowadays, uh, everything changes uh, day by day. So it's uh, really uh, um, complex and also uh, surprising. And also, we are many times we are not ready to solve uh, many problems. So it uh, means uh, um, engineering uh, costs and laboratory costs, uh, as you guess. So uh, now uh, we can catch this uh, speed uh, value uh, and uh, accelerate uh, growing site. But uh, at the same time, we have to uh, learn uh, many things yep. In yep. The, at the same time. We do. Dave. I need to say one thing. There are a lot of things happening now that we don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're talking about the big corporations working in robotics. I don't know, the Chinese companies, European, American. We actually don't know anything what they are doing now. So there are a lot of secrets. There are a lot of advancements, technologies. And the thing, in my opinion now, the, the, the key uh, thing here is how, for example, in our case, working in robotics, in well, in mobile uh, robots, we need to help the adoption on businesses mm -hmm. because you can see a lot of automatis automatization in companies whatever but now we're talking about how we're going to serve the, the 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 people the citizens and them is the challenge so i think that now we're actually working with the, in a in a special time when we when have the opportunity to show what how uh, normal businesses can adopt robots so i think it's cru crucial but i think we're on time we're on time to work on that yeah, and I think the industry is also moving from what we used to see, like these arms putting Teslas together, et cetera. Right? That, that's about uh, automation or robotics. And now we're, we're having them maybe already in our household. I was right. in the, yeah, I was in the, in the hospital, luckily not for myself, just for a regular checkup, uh, in the hospital the other week. And I saw uh, these robots that are actually there to take care of elderly people. Right. So, uh, and I, I'm not. I, I'm, you are not in those kinds of robots. But what, uh, what, what is your vision on that, uh, Oscar? How do you see robots coming into, like Dave said, in your personal life and really becoming, let's say, your friend or maybe your uh, answer to everything? Uh, actually, uh, I, I don't support any uh, science fiction <laughs> ideas about this. I can say, uh, uh, to be honest. Also, but uh, they will affect everything as uh, soon. Uh, maybe 10 years later, everything will be changed in robotic area. And they will start to enter uh, to our life in our home. Uh, and they will take and delegate many uh, work and jobs uh, around us, not just uh, working site, in our social life, maybe. Maybe we can send them uh, to any meetings or events um, probably we can do this uh, as you know Tesla working on it uh, for a long time and um, now uh, Elon Musk has a dream uh, he wants to sell it at $10,000 yeah. <laughs> uh, soon uh, they want to start uh, this process so uh, we have to be ready for uh, a big uh, changing in our lives but uh, we have to manage this uh, process it's very carefully also because still we are human we have lives we have uh, works we have aims we have dreams for this we have to uh, draw the border lines uh, very specifically in this area i believe in absolutely and i think i mean you said i don't support uh, um, uh, science fiction on this I, I agree although if you look around us right a hoverboard is now something that my kid has and it actually was actually featured in the back to the future movie like uh, 60 years ago thing. whatever right and even the fact that we call it a robot comes from a science fiction movie. So the whole term robot and later on robotics actually was coined by science fiction first. Um, Dave, you were also having uh, an answer. <clears throat> well, I have some uh, something to comment to you anyway. So the thing is that we're afraid about, about these new comings, about these new technologies, about how it's going to be the future, of course. There are a lot of talkings about that. Of course, the robot just needs to be here to help. In my opinion, that's the way how we need to build this business. 
how the robots can help in any task or the people actually. Being an AI, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. Do you think that China or Japan or they didn't have this ready? Of course, yes. The other things that they are not showing up because it's not actually public, you know, it's not for everybody. But I think it will, it will take time. It will take time. That's why again, I'm coming back to the to my point that this is another. We need to 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 make business to adopt this because there are a lot of companies in integrating robots now in their in their in their businesses. But we're talking about B to B huge fabrics. I don't know. I mean, these type of of things that they have automatization in the, the different fields. Now, in my point, it's super important on how we're going to integrate in, again. Coming back to the cities. And the and the city sense. Mm -hmm. That's why, for example, in, in our case, we're we're working closer with the municipalities in Finland. Finland, in my opinion, is super advanced. You can see robots actually, food delivery robots on the streets. So I think it takes time, of course. And at the beginning will be difficult, of course. But time by time, we need actually to get rid of it. We need to slow down the adoption. That's no, it. no, true. And about a century ago, somebody said science fiction. Like there was a law, they first had three laws and then they turned it into one and it said a robot may not harm humanity or by inaction allow a, a humanity to come to harm. So basically it's there to help us, like you said. Yeah. But let's tackle the second part of the uh, the, 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 the main question is, uh, because now you said about the robotics industry and what surprised you, but the second part is how did that shape your approach to innovation? So Oscar, how did the coming into the robotic industry, how did that shape um, your approach to innovation? Uh, uh, how can I say it? Uh, I can explain this like this. Uh, innovation shaped in robotics uh, like uh, about the uh, usefulness uh, side. Uh, so how can we use these systems uh, with high efficiency and uh, maximum capacity? So and nowadays, all of uh, these works and studies about robotic sites uh, focusing on these uh, questions directly. So uh, robotics, I kill, uh, mean is uh, efficiency in the uh, mm -hmm. many sectors uh, in many areas nowadays. So uh, all innovations like reporting sites and support decision uh, Side decision support sites and uh, another all works about site this uh, increasing capacity and efficiency. Okay, and Dave, what is your approach to innovation based on the robotic industry? Uh, we'll come back to the to the first comment that I did about cloud because I mean robotics, and mechanical, everything. Of course, it had been doing for the last 50, 50 years or more actually. But I think that now we are actually trying to integrate new things, and this is the core. The, in my opinion, the core task, how to approach what we have, the technology that we have, and how we can integrate with new ones. Uh, again, in my opinion, cloud will be a play a huge, uh, uh, let's say, role here. So we're talking about a uh, cloud robotics, exactly. I think you know about about this, and and actually, is how how we're gonna how we're gonna help. Uh, different different stuff different things different robots to be connected with each other actually and this is really bad actually i mean can be for you actually but this is the truth i mean how the for example the big the electric vehicles they are connected to each other but we don't know that well not everybody so this is actually in my in, in my case again how we can um, allow uh, connection between the vehicles the batteries and the robots right so it is about how, how we're connecting all of these, and this is what we're trying to do. Okay. I, <clears throat> I want to address another topic. It's about the tolerance of failure. So um, we all know that Tesla is trying to um, have self-driving taxis, etc., already for, for, I think, a decade or more. Um, the problem is, and I saw that in my neighborhood as well, we had a Tesla driver that was on, on self-driving, and he actually, unfortunately, he hit a tree and he could not uh, actually, uh, he, well, he died in that accident, right? But then you say, okay, that's that's a loss of life. And that's, of course, very impactful to the family and everybody. But if you look at that, if you zoom out, right, how many people actually die in the traffic every single day due to human errors? So that happens a lot. I think it's still very dangerous to be in traffic, right? Now, the thing is, apparently, humans say, well, if it's a human error, even if somebody had a drink too many and then causes an accident, it's also like part of life. Whereas if a robot crashes into something and it actually injures your small little toe, so small impact, 
then people say we cannot go to self-driving, etc. And so I think I'd like your view on that debate because on, on the one hand, it's a lot safer. Robots don't get tired, don't have laws that humans do whatever. On the other hand, the tolerance of fault is a lot lower. So how do you go about that? Yes, it's our main uh, working area, uh, failure and toleration. I can uh, give an example about uh, our business sites. Uh, we are in uh, factories about uh, autonomous uh, driving solutions. Uh, we are uh, moving very uh, heavy loads uh, in factories. So we can see this. If we stop or make a malfunction station or another uh, ex miss, uh, small accident, it creates a big sensation in the factory even. Because uh, nowadays still uh, the people has uh, have tolerance to another people and uh, drivers and forklifts and they can think this they are human they can do this but uh, in robotic side uh, they think uh, idealist about this robots can't uh, and make mistake robot can't stop robot can uh, make any wrong thing about uh, his uh, duties and his responsibilities. The sites uh, because of this they have no um, any uh, toleration about this so uh, it start uh, creates a big sensation uh, and uh, like example in tesla sites uh, we can see uh, went a uh, long time this idea and this uh, uh, this station it won't be changed i can say uh -huh. and dave what's your view on that well um I think we're living in, in again in the same country in Finland, yeah. and it's a good example, yeah, right? So how the country itself understands that needs to be adoption of new technologies or new uh, well things around robotics in this case, and they need to go step by step. So Finland is not the the unique one. I mean, we have Estonia, I think UK also in some in some small parts, the USA. In, mm -hmm. in in California and other states, by the way, they have been doing this step by step. So this is something that, in my opinion, will not stop anybody. To be honest, is good or bad? We can debate on that. But but uh, at the end of the day, people are building products for people and trying to increase uh, the, the 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 lifetime of the of the people, whatever. So I think yes, it's a big challenge, of course, and and will be not easier. But again, I believe that there are some some uh, countries believing on this, and they are doing this this step by step. And about the low tolerance in in Finland, was the same at the beginning two years ago when the, the robots started ro going around in the city, and now and other people loves, you know. At the beginning, they were scared or they were not against that. They were funny videos about that. But at the end of the day, people make orders, make deliveries with with robots now. So yeah, it's, it's a shame. It's a process. Same like 40 years ago, if you ask people on the street, do you need a mobile phone? They would say, no, I'm, I'm reachable by, by my, yeah, yeah, my own phone. Right. Like, why would I need a phone when I'm on the bike and now we can no longer do without that? Okay. Right. So as a, as a final thought, uh, Leonardo da Vinci also made a couple of designs on, on robots. I think he designed the first helicopter. It never flew, of course, but he had a design. In in your creative uh, creative minds, Oskar, what would be your next Leonardo da Vinci kind of robot that you would like to see in in your space? Uh, probably, and they will uh, write poem, <laughs> and yes, definitely, and they will write uh, and uh, no exist any stories, maybe uh, movie scenarios. They will start. Uh, they are our uh, new actually. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, models mm -hmm. because um, today uh, they uh, dreaming uh, for this because now uh, still there is a um, reality uh, dating uh, many people think uh, robot robots can't uh, create anything uh, from zero mm -hmm. and uh, and happen uh, in this uh, world so when uh, they will start to create and uh, draft some things about them. Uh, it will be uh, affect may maybe all of things. Okay, and Dave, your Leonardo kind of uh, design, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> no, well, I think that uh, one of the verticals that I think they are doing really good in, for example, in medicine. So we're talking about uh, surgeries, for example. So they have been doing like, really good cases 
where uh, the doctor is really far away and there is a robot actually with an arm robot. So I think these kind of things would definitely make the difference in robotics. Again, in my opinion, is how, how to, to help people. The task needs to be the, on that. Right. So I think, I think this type of uh, telemedicine, not telemedicine, but everything related with medicine will be a good, a good thing to be. And it's, and it's happening, actually. I mean, I'm not t- telling any, any cyberpunk thing. Yeah. It's happening, happening. I forgot the name of the movie, but I saw a movie on the plane the other day where there was actually a company who um, had the single view of saying, let's get a robot out there that is the, for- the, the, the form factor of a child. And the only thing that this robot needs to do is to love the other people that there's in their family. And there's a whole debate in that movie, and it's really fun. Well, it's, it's fun and interesting to see how do you go about loving a machine? How do you go, and what is love, right? How do you, how do you actually do that? But I'm so sorry, but you, you don't need to go far away. <laughs> Are you, do you have your own car? Yes, I do. Do you love your car? Uh, yes, but it's not. I mean, child. I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. No, you're right. But it's so. It, if you look at that movie, it's really it's like a mother, and it, it's it's really it gets you thinking, saying, "Where are we heading into? What are we heading into?" So, uh, I think the robotics industry is here to stay. Like I said, already started two thousand years ago. I, I didn't even know when Greek gods actually lived, but yeah. it, it's not, well decades, if not millions of years ago. Uh, and I think we, we're looking at a bright future. So. Uh, uh, thank you very much for for being in this uh, this podcast, and um, yeah, thank you for joining to our all all of our listeners. So thank you for joining the startup uh, spotlight. Um, we hope you enjoyed uh, exploring our guests' uh, view on things, and uh, yeah, subscribe and please be on the next one. So um, when you're interested, and this is for the listeners uh, outside, when you're interested in investing in transformative startups passionate about mentoring the next wave of pioneers or a founder with a groundbreaking idea, we love to connect to you, right? So please reach out. For info, you can, how you can get involved, you can visit us at startupbootcamp.org or find us on all the socials like Instagram, Facebook. Are there still people on Facebook? Yes, I think it's my uh, my generation that's on Facebook. Oh, my adult. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, a LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok, and we cannot wait to, uh, to see you there. So uh, with that, I would like to say, uh, let's uh, see you at the next Startup Spotlight. And remember, innovation will save the world. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you.